Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are about two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romaine Bostic, Caroline Hyde, Taylor Riggs counting you down to the close and here to help take us beyond the bell. Our global simulcast joined now by Carol Masser and Tim Stenevik bringing together our Bloomberg television, radio, and YouTube audiences here as we parse through what happened during the trading day. And Carol... Not a lot happened during the trading day, flat on the day. We're all just <laughs> waiting for all of these earnings, Romaine. I mean, Google, I can't wait to see their numbers. Ad sales, we're expecting a potentially big drop, so that's one thing that's on our focus. Tim, we're also watching Microsoft. Yeah, we are. The big question, will investors care? Check out this data. Going into today, four out of five companies that have reported earnings thus far have met or beat estimates, but on average, shares have gained less than one-tenth of one percent after the reports. That's according to data compiled by Bloomberg. So... High expectations, are they all baked in? I mean, just check out what Tesla did. One of the biggest pull downs yeah. on the major benchmarks today, even though it beat on revenue, beat yeah. on profit, but too far, too fast, Taylor. It's interesting, though, whether we'll see the Microsoft hit, what, the second company to get to such a $2 trillion mm -hmm. market cap? 1.98 trillion by my math right now. And we just love round numbers on this program, so we cite we? those statistics. <laughs> it's up four tenths of 1%. You go on over to Alphabet, of course, lower on the day, but up 30% year to date, way outperforming in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So really, I'm um, sort of uh, hoping that they can meet up to these expectations. But, well, if the street's looking at 25% year-over-year growth, Romain, I mean, it'll, 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 they'll do it, right? Yeah, well, we'll see here. I mean, look, this is going to be it looks like a record high. We're talking about up less than a tenth of a percent here on the S&P 500. It's going to take a moment for this to settle here. So we'll see whether it settles in the green or the red. But right now, it's at 41.86 here. That actually puts you in the red on the day on the S&P 500. Russell 2000 up a tenth of a percent. It's 23.01. Dow Jones Industrial Average pretty much unchanged right now, right just below that 34,000 level here. And the NASDAQ composite actually didn't do a whole lot of anything. That was your big laggard here on the day. Big tech uh, taking a little bit of a breather here as we await a lot of those earnings the deposit down about four five tenths of a percent well i think that's what's important right romaine is that we definitely did see some of those big tech names whether it was uh alphabet whether it was tesla whether it was apple really dragging uh taylor on the overall trade it was those names that have been such the big momentum players over the past year but yeah. investors kind of backing off that trade today and we didn't have the transportation up index there but i think we're closer at record highs as well and you really see that on a sector level for our radio audience you're now up two point four percent on terms of transportation energy you're getting that OPEC plus meeting well they're not quite going to meet tomorrow because they're just going to slowly extend some of that supply increases the market really taking that in stride we migrate down to the bottom and of course for the radio audience our utility our bond instruments uh, still down about nine tenths of one percent Hey guys, uh, Texas, Texas Instruments coming out at the moment, Carol, just to first quarter revenue, $4.29 billion. That is a beat versus the estimate of $4 billion for the revenue. And their second quarter earnings per share team, well, they're seeing $1.68 to $1.92 for their forward-looking guidance here. The estimate have been for the bottom of that at $1.68. So managing to beat, remember, this is a company that continues to win out overall, Carol. Mm -hmm. And as we see a desire to get into chips, the supply just not able to to compete and keep up with the likes of demand. Right, exactly. Texas Instruments down about 1.7%, 1.5% there in the after hours. Let's talk about Amgen also crossing the Bloomberg. First quarter adjusted EPS, 370 a share. That is a miss by 33 cents. The Wall, uh, Wall Street community looking for $4.03 a share. Let's talk about the top line. The first quarter revenue line, 5.9 billion. That too is a miss, six and a quarter billion. And the company talking about fiscal year revenue of 25.8 to 26. 6.6 billion yeah. the estimate out there 26.4 yeah. so reining that all in all right alphabet earnings crossing the wire 1q eps 26.29 the estimate was for 15.64 1q on the revenue side 55.31 estimate 5161 here so a big beat here both eps and revenue those operating margins also coming in above estimates 30 percent on the operating margins the street was looking for 22.4 at least that was the consensus here so at least on some of these headline numbers crossing the wire right now it does look a little bit good of course we want to dig a little bit deeper into that cloud business into that ad business that's a lot more important particularly what google pays 
for those ads. Well, and they're saying it here, uh, paragraph two, right in the press release, CEO saying that, Caroline, over the last year, people mm. have turned to Google search and those online services to stay informed. They have focused on delivering yeah. that, and it is happening. The cloud services helping all of these businesses in that digital transformation. And talking of cloud helping businesses, Microsoft, the juggernaut, will it be $2 trillion market cap? Revenue, $41.7 billion. Basically in line just slightly above market expectations for $41.05 billion for the fiscal third quarter of this company. Third quarter earnings per share coming in at $2.03. The estimate had been for $1.78, so a big beat there when you're looking at Microsoft. But remember, this is a company that has indeed managed to outperform. We have seen almost $2 trillion market cap. No wonder maybe these lofty expectations, even though they beat, they can't manage to push the shares higher. We're currently seeing their productivity revenue coming in at $3.55 billion in yeah. line. The intelligent cloud well, yeah. remain $15.12 billion. That's the beat. All right, uh, just quickly back to Alphabet, a $50 billion yes. buyback of that class C shares there. That's, uh, of course, G-O-G-G-L there. $50 billion buyback there, Tim. Yeah, Microsoft, keep an eye on Microsoft, too, uh, moving lower by more than 2%. Um, that's certainly a, a big, uh, big buyback, Romain. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the Microsoft uh, press release right now. Over a year into the pandemic, digital adoption curves aren't slowing down. They're accelerating, and it's just the beginning. That's according to Satya Nadella, the company's CEO. We are building the cloud for the next decade, expanding our addressable market, and innovating across every layer of the tech stack to help our customers be resilient and transform. Big question that I have about Microsoft is returning to work. Uh, what's the company going to say mm. about how companies are ordering products and services ahead of that, and what that means for the company's business as this hybrid model moving forward? And of course, what does it mean for the share price when you've already seen a 17% run up in the in this? year of 2021 and also that's now 16 straight quarters we've seen Microsoft beat mm -hmm. into and, and give us double digit revenue growth I mean this is a company that just continues to fire on all cylinders however we fall after hours after reporting their third quarter results Taylor is it just that the market has factored in too much of a good thing thus far yeah Caroline I mean that certainly has been the question of course as they've been just figuring out the price to perfection, but it's unbelievable when you see a, an almost $2 trillion company post gains uh, like that in terms of a quarterly revenue number. We continue to take at the horse race that comes out. It is shares of Starbucks, of course, that we're looking. Second quarter comp sales coming in a little bit lighter than expected. You're up 15%. Estimates remain were for about 17%. And they're seeing that full year comp sales, though, grow anywhere from 18 to 23%. Uh, do you migrate yeah. down to the bottom line? It does look like an improvement of 62 cents relative to estimates of 53 cents. You're seeing an improvement here on the on the bottom line. That top line number might be why shares yeah. are following just a little bit lighter than what yeah. we were thinking. Uh, we go forward, though, to some of that full year guidance as well. Well, those two Q uh, China sales, uh, people are looking at it for that. Uh, the street was looking for about 97 percent growth there. They got 91 percent growth, so a bit of a miss there with regards to the growth over there in China. The company saying uh, that Oh, it's full, here are the full year adjusted EPS numbers, 290 to $3. That's the range that it's giving. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. I guess, a little Better. bit higher uh, than the previous range, which is 270 to 290 So basically going from uh, the top end of, the, uh, of last range, now that's now your bottom end, $3 is on your top end. Yeah, what's also interesting about Starbucks is, as you mentioned, Romain, I think it's really important that we look at what's going on in China because we've talked with lots of companies, lots of CEOs, the virus specifically hit China and Asia first, right? So we saw their impact. They've also been coming out of it much more quickly or at least ahead of the rest of the world. So we want to see what's going on specifically in China. Starbucks also, when we talk about capital expenditures, uh, what they're doing, they opened five net new stores in the second quarter of fiscal 2021. So we are seeing companies kind of move on, expand their capacity, mm. Caroline, and that's something that we want to see what CEOs are doing specifically uh, with their money. And how also they're talking about the great reopening. They're mm -hmm. saying, Starbucks in the press release, saying they're positioned for the inevitable, what they call great human reconnection, guys. Doesn't that fill your heart with joy? They're unf seeing it unfold in the U.S., propagate in every market around the world, and they say this is they want to be there at scale. Growth at scale is on the agenda. It's also that we should be feeding back, perhaps, Tim, into what we're seeing in the yeah. read across in the Google and Facebook actually rising yeah. after hours, remain after Alphabet was is moving higher. 
All right, more into. earnings here. The fire hose continues. This on <laughs> Visa 2Q net revenue, 5.7 billion. The estimate was for 5.55 billion. Adjusted EPS 138. The street was looking for 127s on consensus. Here's the thing, though. Cross-border volumes on a constant currency basis down 11 percent. That's a key figure here. The street was looking for down 2 percent here. Of course, that cross uh, currency, uh, the cross-border volumes, of course, a real indicator here of, of that reopening trade. And at least based on what we're seeing off of these fiscal 2Q numbers, Q2 numbers here, uh, not quite meeting street estimates, Tim. Yeah, uh, Visa, Visa coming out with earnings just now. Um, guys, I'm also keeping an eye on Illumina. Uh, first quarter adjusted EPS coming in at $1.89 uh, at versus estimates of $1.40. So a big beat there on the bottom line. Uh, in terms of other companies, revenue beating estimates on the top line uh, as well. Right, and the stock we're seeing up about 2% in the after hours. Got to go back to, though, Microsoft. Third quarter revenue, yeah. $41.71 billion versus the estimate of 41.05. So we're getting more, you know, in terms of their quarter. But I think it's going to be really interesting in terms of how the stock is trading, down about 3.5%. So, Caroline, we talked earlier about it hitting, a, you know, becoming a $2 trillion stock. Doesn't look like this earnings report is going to do it for it. Meanwhile, let's talk Oreo cookies. <laughs> team, which will be getting Mondelez, coming wow. out with its numbers, sees full year organic revenue up 3%, previously saw above 3%. Wow. So keeping in wow. line with that overall viewpoint coming oh. from Mondelez. I Go mean, not, not that shocking, but we want to be interested in what maybe the sugar prices are doing for Mondelez. They see their first quarter revenue $7.24 billion. That had been slightly better than expected. And also their adjusted earnings per share also beats remain. Yeah. Um, uh, the big deal here, and I mean, look, when we talk about all of these companies moving here, these are your heavyweights, folks. I mean, so when we talk about the effect here on the broader market tomorrow, this is certainly going to have an effect. Obviously, Microsoft, second biggest uh, uh, mm -hmm. the weight in the S&P 500. And, of course, that's one of your biggest decliners, second biggest decliner in post-market trading. But then, of course, on the flip side of that, you got Alphabet. Uh, that's basically your biggest gainer here in post-market trading. And that company, of course, uh, in the top 10 as well in terms of its weighting. And I really think that $50 billion share buyback could be one of those factors that investors mm -hmm. like the use of cash the appropriate way to spend that cash Tim of course you always wonder if there's signals that there's no better way to use that cash but it's better than just sitting there on the balance sheet earning nothing so that certainly perhaps Tim helps migrate those shares higher and I also think that Romaine did a good job of trying to digest where we are yeah, when you think in this Microsoft world <laughs> it's an almost two trillion dollar company <laughs> they're getting intelligent cloud revenue that's up 23 percent we had Anurag Ron him on earlier and he just talks about the size and scope of a company this big posting now this 16 straight quarters of double digit revenue growth just sort of unbelievable the gains that this company continues to make yeah and especially like i said earlier guys with returning to work and returning to the office the way that the company is thinking about uh positioning itself in that hybrid work environment the the company's investment of course in, in microsoft teams that that big slack competitor that is increasingly gaining market share and of course the company's cloud right it's all about the company's cloud growth. It's high margin, but there is lots of competition. So keeping an eye there uh, as well. And also watching things like Facebook and Twitter, which are also rising mm. uh, along with some of the other companies that came yeah. out, Google specifically. So you've got to kind of watch Caroline, right, in terms of the other names that get impacted in the sectors. And of course, thinking ahead to tomorrow, we have the likes of Apple, mm. you have the likes of Facebook with their earnings as well. So thick and fast on the week. But Remain, it's interesting, of course, we want to hear a bit about the M&A story that we hear from some of these big tech companies. Microsoft, of course, making its second largest purchase since LinkedIn, and splashing their cash on nuance. <laughs> we'll see whether we get any sort of details or any nuance in that earnings call a little bit later. We're yeah, off by 3.6%. Yeah, and I'm glad you were splashing the cash. Dan Ives over at Wedbush had a great note out, of course, uh, on this idea here that you are going to start to see a lot more more M&A activity in tech. He did, of course, cite that nuanced deal uh, that Microsoft had. But tomorrow, of course, a lot of the big ones uh, that you're going to be here for uh, to cover. So we can't talk about the seven-year bond auction today. Is the that what I'm taking auction. here? Did that happen? Is that, is that what I'm getting I from this that. conversation? Okay. Carol, Sounds I Sounds like we got to go now. All right. <laughs> Love you, Taylor. Love bond auctions. That's going to do it for our cross-platform coverage on Bloomberg Radio, Bloomberg TV, and YouTube. Same oh. place, same time tomorrow. Pinterest just crossing. We'll bring it to you.